emulating the PS3 on the PC has come a long way in the past few years. So in this video, we're going to take a look, but we're not just going to take a look. We're going to go through the steps on how you can get this installed yourself. So without further delay, let's dive in. So before we get ahead of ourselves and start downloading things and getting it all set up on the PC, there's something really important I need to go over first, and that's the specs of my PC. Now, I don't think I have some ridiculously overpriced powerhouse of a PC. I would actually class it as quite a moderate gaming PC. But when it comes to emulating the PS3, your results may vary depending on what hardware you've got. So the most important part of my gaming PC is the graphics card. Now I'm using an RTX 3070. It's not a TI or a Super or anything like that. It's just a plain old 3070. Now it's a pretty decent graphics card with 8 gig of VRAM. It's not the best, but then again, as I said before, it's a moderate gaming PC. Now for the CPU, I have an AMD Ryzen 7. So I think it's the 5800X. And then I've got 32 gigs of DDR4 RAM. So nothing crazy here. We're not talking $10,000 worth of PC equipment. So that just gives you an idea of what system I've got and then you'll see the performance that I get compared to what you get. Now let's quickly go over what you're actually going to need. Of course you're going to need a PC with a decent graphics card etc just like we talked about and then you're going to need some kind of control pad. So anything that can connect to your PC is going to work here. PlayStation 4, 5 pad, Xbox Series S and X, or any of the third party controllers pretty much that's out there, you're going to be able to configure and use here. The operating system on my PC behind me is Windows 11, but you can use Windows 10 as well. I don't think there's going to be any difference in performance, etc. But what do you do if you don't have a legitimate copy of Windows? Because I will admit, in the past, I have used KVM activated Windows and things like that. But thanks to today's sponsor, we don't need to do that anymore because we can get Windows 11 keys dirt cheap. So here's a quick message from today's sponsor, KeysFan. This video is sponsored by KeysFan, the best place to get legitimate Windows 10 and Windows 11 keys. They also have 24 seven online customer service to answer all your questions and a lifetime after sales service. But the most important thing is how much are the keys? Well, if we have a look at this Windows 11 Professional key, it's coming out at $29.99, but you don't want to pay that, right? So if you use code ARG50, you're going to save 50%. That Windows 11 key is only $14.99 or £11.57. Let's have a look at Office 2021, £65. Let's use ARG62 and it's only £24 or $31. There really is some unbelievable savings to be had at KeysFan. Check the description below for the links and don't forget to use the discount codes. So now we've got all that out of the way, let's jump on over to the PC and get this process started. So over on the desktop of my PC, we can see we've got the RPCS3 pack. Now for your convenience, what I've done is I've put everything into a pack compiled it, stuck it in the description below so you can have a direct download link just to save you from scouring the internet and going to different sites and downloading stuff. So what's actually included in the pack? Well, we have the PS3 opdat.pup, which essentially is the firmware for a PS3. We have PKGI fake package. We have the PKGI fix. And then of course the RP CS3 application itself, the emulator itself. So once you've downloaded the pack, make sure you extract it somewhere, go into the RP CS3 folder and double click the exe file. You might get this pop up. I just hit continue anyway. So we've got some options here. We can create a desktop shortcut. Now I actually created it on mine because it was nice and easy. And then you can tick the box that says I have read the quick start guide and do not show again if you don't want to see it again. So click continue on this. So this is the main interface itself. 
Now, the first thing you want to do is install the firmware. So if you go to the top left where it says file and in the list, you should see install firmware. Now, all you need to do is search for that PS3 opdat.pop and click open. Now, this is going to install the firmware and it looks like it's done it really quick. But trust me, there's a lot more to it than that. And it does take quite a bit of time. That's the great thing about video editing, right? You guys don't have to sit here for 15, 20 minutes, half an hour when that's sort of going through everything. Anyway, so once this part's done and you're back to this window, what you want to do is click refresh and it should actually pop up the PS3 firmware. Right click on it and click boot. Now the first boot is going to take absolutely forever to sort of get everything installed. I think mine actually took about half an hour. Ignore where it says time remaining because it did actually take quite a lot longer than this. So let's skip ahead until it's actually done. So now it's going through the last couple of bits, getting it set up and it should boot into the firmware. Now you might get a pop up like I did saying, do you want to allow it access on your network? I just hit, yeah, sure, why not? The database on the system storage will be rebuilt. So it needs to do a rebuild but your controller might not work yet. So if you go to the configuration tab at the top and then go down to pads, we're going to be able to get it set up because I think by default it wants to use the keyboard, which yeah, don't try and play PS3 games with the keyboard. So as you can see, player one is set to keyboard. So just go and pick the controller. I'm using a PS5 controller, so I'll pick dual sense and then hit save. Now, I didn't actually hit save this time, so I had to go back into it. Just make sure you click save. So you're going to want to click X to enter. It will rebuild the database and then it will reboot. Now, this is the second boot and it's going to be a lot quicker from now on. I'll leave this in real time so you can actually see how long it takes to boot up the PS3. There we go. We see the Sony logo. And this is just basically going to go through the normal setup as you would on a brand new PS3. So just go through the settings, you know, set your HDMI. Yes. OK, just don't bother setting up any of the network stuff because you're not going to be able to connect to the PSN network anyway. So once you've gone through all that, the PS3 should start normally. So you can see there it's compiling shaders. But we're booting in to the home screen, sort of the home menu on the PS3, if you like. Now, ignore that corrupted data. Don't know what that is. I think it's just kind of like a bug with it or something. But for all intents and purposes, everything has now been set up. So the next thing we're going to do is install PKGI. So go ahead and shut down the PS3 emulator and then obviously click yes. Once the screen goes black and the text at the bottom stops moving, you can just click X. It's basically shut down at that point. So go back to file, but this time click install packages and then basically browse to where the PKGI package file is. Click open, then click yes. It should say success. So click OK on that. Right. We need to do something. We need to copy some files across from that PKGI fix folder. So the pack that you downloaded has a folder called PKGI fix with a load of text files in it. So you want to open that up, open the RPCS3 folder, and we're going to go into dev HDD0. Then we're going to go into game, and then it's this one here with PKGI on it. Click on the user data. As you can see, I've already copied all mine across, but basically you won't have these. Just grab them all and dump them all into this folder, as you see I've done here. So once you've copied them across, you can just close those windows. Back in this PS3 emulator, what you want to do is right click on PKGI and then look for create custom configuration from global settings. Click on that and then go to network because we want to give it internet access. Where it says disconnected, click connected. And on the right, 
click RPC N. Apply these settings and then you can close this window. So hopefully if you've done everything right up to now, you should be able to right click and then boot with custom configuration. And we're gonna skip this part just as it's setting everything up. So after it's finished doing its thing, you should see this screen here. Now, I don't need to explain to anyone what this application is for or what it does. So let's just see how things go and try and actually install something. So this 1942 Joint Strike, it's not very big, 129 megabytes. This is going to be perfect for us testing. So you basically just click on it and it's going to download. You know, it's, it's pretty simple, self-explanatory. But once it's downloaded, it's not actually going to work yet. There's two more things that we need to do to actually get it working. So once it's downloaded, you're going to click X. Now we can actually close this down now. We don't need it anymore. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go back into the PS3 interface or firmware. So we're going to boot that. Now this is going to boot a lot quicker than it's done in the past because everything's set up now. Everything's done. Now we're in the dashboard. We want to go all the way to the left, turn off system, tick, turn off automatically after background update and then click yes. So the update is basically the game or the content we've just downloaded. Once it goes black and the tech stops moving, we know we can exit off, hit refresh and then you'll see the content. But if you double click on it, it's moaning about some wrap files being missing. So we need to basically move those across, basically tell it where they are. So if you open the RPCS3 folder again, we want to go in to dev HDD0. This time we're going to go into X data. And here is the wrap file in question. Drag and drop it over onto the window, just as you see me doing here. Now, if it doesn't copy or it doesn't let you copy it across, just close down the emulator, reopen it, and then try and drop it across. There's a bug where sometimes it doesn't let you do that. Anyway, that's all done and that's all installed now. So you can basically double click on it and it's gonna work. So let's launch it and then we're gonna skip ahead to get into gameplay. And as you can see, the compiling shaders will pop up now and again because that's it just needs to compile the shaders. Most emulators work that way now. But as you can see, it's running perfect. I've played loads of different games. Performance has never been an issue, but just remember that I'm using a 3070 eight gigabyte card with a pretty beefy processor. So results may vary. Now, I can't remember the last time I looked into PS3 emulation on the PC, but it must have been quite a long time ago because I was actually quite blown away that how well this actually runs. Now, I have a PlayStation 3, a PlayStation 3 Slim, and it is jailbroken and it's got custom firmware, but it's sitting on the shelf up there somewhere and actually bringing it down, connecting it all up to play some games I know it's real world problems, right? It's actually really cool that if I do want to play some PS3 games, I can just play them on my PC. And of course, there's a lot more storage on the PC. So backing up all my games, etc. It's nice and easy and convenient. Now we will be looking at some other emulators going forward, like the Xbox and Xbox 360. Now a good friend of mine, Panda, has been showing me some of the advancements they've been making to those emulators. Unfortunately, the 360 emulator is not as good as RPCS3, but it's still a lot better than it was when I last looked at it. So I think that's about it for this video, but a massive thank you to KeysFan for being today's sponsor. And of course, if you've got any questions or you need any help with anything you've seen in this video or any other video, Drop it in the comments below and I'll try and get back to you as soon as I can. I'm JP, you've been watching Alien Gaming and as always, I'll catch you in the next one. Hi YouTube viewers, if you enjoy JP's content, don't forget to like, subscribe and give that bell a little tickle, 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 so you don't miss any future uploads.